So you'll notice here that we've skipped over a few chapters. We're now at chapter 5, where we're going to examine some histology, the various tissue types. We've skipped over chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4, because they're mainly the content of our general biology course, which is a prerequisite for this. So there's no sense in repeating that. However, if it's been a long time since you had a general biology course, you might want to take a moment and look through each of those chapters and familiarize yourself again with many of the concepts because they're going to come up throughout the next two semesters. In this chapter, we'll be studying tissues. We'll look at various types of epithelial tissue. We'll look at various connective tissues. We'll then look at nervous and muscular tissues, intercellular junctions, glands and membranes, as well as tissue growth, development, death, and repair. There is a lab associated with this section in which you will prepare a survey of the various tissue types and where they're located. You will find that assignment listed within the content for this chapter. So there are 50 trillion cells of 200 different cell types. Within those, there are four broad categories of tissues. There's epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue, and muscular tissue. Organs are structures with discrete boundaries that are composed of two or more different tissue types. Histology is the microscopic anatomy of those tissues, the study of tissues and how they are arranged into organs. So a tissue is a group of similar cells and cell products that arise from the same region of the embryo and work together to perform a specific structural or physiological role in an organ. Four primary tissues differ from one another in the types of functions of their cells, the characteristics of the matrix, the extracellular material, and the relative amount of space occupied by cells versus matrix. Tissue is composed of cells and matrix. All tissue is composed of cells and matrix. The matrix is composed of fibrous proteins and then a clear gel, anywhere from liquid to solid, that's known as ground substance. So in any tissue, we're going to find cells and matrix, which is a composition of fibrous proteins and clear gel liquid-like solution called ground substance. So humans begin development as a single cell, the fertilized egg. <clears throat> this divides to produce scores of identical similar cells. First tissues appear when these cells start to organize themselves into layers. First there are two layers and then three. There are three primary germ layers. We won't get into too much detail here, as this is the content of the end of next semester. Ectoderm is the outer layer. Ecto, the root meaning outside, and it gives rise to the epidermis and the nervous system. Endoderm, endo as in inside, is the inside layer, and it's going to give rise to the mucous membranes and linings of digestive and respiratory tracts, the digestive glands, and many other things. In between these two layers, you'll find the mesoderm. Mesoderm means middle, becomes a gelatinous tissue called mesenchyme, which has wispy collagen fibers and fibroblasts in a gel matrix. This will eventually give rise to the muscle, bone, and blood. You can think of it this way. In your body, you've got a tube all the way through the middle, from the mouth to your anus, and you have skin on the outside. Anything that's close to the outside is probably derived from ectoderm. And anything all the way down the middle, like the gut tube, is going to probably arise from mesoderm. Anything in between the gut tube and the outside, such as muscles and bones, would arise from the substance in the middle, which is called mesoderm. So these are three embryonic germ layers. And often we refer to which germ layer a tissue is derived from. Other than that, we probably won't see too much mention of ectoderm, endoderm, or mesoderm. Now, it's difficult sometimes to interpret tissue sections, because they're prepared in slices. There are fixatives that are placed on them to prevent decay, such as formalin. 
And in these thin slices, it's difficult to tell where you are within a cell. Some of the cells are going to be stained in order to help us visualize them, like pink or blue. And this is artificial coloring. So keep in mind when you're looking at these slides, they're not exactly the same color as they would be in tissue. Sectioning reduces a three-dimensional structure into two-dimensional slices, and this is why it can be sometimes hard to find your way around on histology slides. For example, if you look at this egg here, um, and it has a yolk right in the middle, but depending on where we make the slice through the egg, we may or may not get the yolk in our section. In a similar way, depending on where we slice the tissue, a cell may not get the nucleus in its slice or any of the other organelles that you're looking for. Sometimes we're sectioning hollow structures. In a cross section of a blood vessel, for example, you're not really going to recognize it as a blood vessel. It could look, if it was at this red level, like just two open circles, or if you were in the base of it, it could look like just one elliptical circle. So we have to use our imagination a little bit to reconstruct the three-dimensional structure in these histology slides. A longitudinal section, for example, of a sweat gland, could just look like this. You wouldn't necessarily know that that was a sweat gland with a naive eye. However, after a bit of practice, you can begin to visualize these things more clearly. Now, there are various types of tissue sections. There are longitudinal sections, which is where tissue is cut along the direction of the organ. There's a cross section or transverse section, which is where the tissue is cut perpendicular to the length of the organ. And sometimes an oblique section, where the tissue is cut at an angle that's somewhere between cross and longitudinal section. This also can add to the mystery of what we're looking at in these histology slides. There are also non-section preparations, things like a smear, which is when a tissue is rubbed or spread across the side. For example, in blood, we'll do a smear to examine the content. There's also a spread, which is when we have cobwebby tissue and it's kind of spread out and laid across the slide. The areolar tissue would be a great example how we would use a spread. So now we've had an introduction to the study of tissues. Now let's move on to look specifically at epithelial tissues.